Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Jacques from the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Insects use chemical cues in their environment for food detection, laying eggs, finding a mate, and avoiding danger. Now, if we can manipulate these cues, we can use them for pest control without the use of pesticides. Moths are active at night, and it is important to find a mate of the same species, preferably. And uh, to do this, they need a very highly specific communication with sex pheromone. You don't know who you might bump into when you can't see when you're, where you're going at night. That's a new definition of a blind date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, strangers <laughs> in the night. Oh, well, you know, when the female moth is sexually active, she emits a very species-specific signal. And, you know, the male moths have a highly sensitive and specific reception system in their antennae. Yes, that is why the uh, antennae of the male moths have those feather-like structures. And the females just have little stumps. <laughs> Unfortunately, some moth species are major pests and cause severe forest damage in many parts of the world. Sex pheromones are species-specific and can be used as environmentally friendly ways to control target species. And, you know, there's this review by Kotrumpa et al. that discuss synthesis and regulation of sex pheromones. Pheromones are airborne molecules that are detected by the insect olfactory system, in this case the antennae. And you know, antennae carry hair-like structures called sensilla that house the olfactory receptor neurons. Pheromone-sensitive sensilla are the most abundant and the longest of the male antennae, and this allows them to detect minute amounts of pheromones. You know, for a sensitive and dynamic pheromone detection system, it is, it is the ligand must be removed quickly so that the receptor can detect and respond to the next signal that's coming. Yeah, well, otherwise they'll smell something once and get all confused. It kind of reminds me of the smell of warm cinnamon rolls in the mall. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting back to the paper, <laughs> when the authors tested the response of S. littoralis larvae to pheromones, they found that the larvae were attracted to the pheromones. It is surprising that all larvae, regardless of their future sex, were attracted to the female pheromones. And to confirm this behavior, they compared both moth and larvae chemosensory transcriptomes. Interestingly, both expressed pheromone binding proteins in their antennae. That raises the question, why would sexually immature larvae that presumably don't yet care about sex would be attracted to, to the female sexual signal? I was actually exactly thinking the same. <laughs> Yeah, the authors uh, set up uh, food with sex pheromone and one without and observed that the larvae were more attracted to the food source containing the pheromone. Hmm, but you know, that's pretty smart. I mean, it's probable that the pheromone may get adsorbed into leaf surfaces during oviposition and that guides the larvae to the food source. Okay, we've talked about pheromones as potential attractants for these pests, but what about closely related moth species? I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, to identify the major olfactory genes used for pheromone detection in two closely related moth species, Zhang et al. performed transcriptome sequencing of the antennae of the Yunnan pine and the Simao pine moths. Now, between these two moth species, most of the sequence differences were in the olfactory binding proteins and the olfactory receptors. You know, that makes complete sense because the binding proteins and the receptors play a role in ligand discrimination for species-specific detection. You know, and the kind of knowledge we get from sequencing is just amazing. Not only, can, can, not only can we study the mechanism, but we can also see how we can work towards mimicking either this female sex pheromone or to trick the male's olfactory receptors. Mess with their little heads. Of course. Right? <laughs> pesticides, the problem is pesticides really kill all insects, uh, both good and bad, and a better understanding of insect behavior and communication will help us work with nature to provide safer pest management in the future. Of course. Um, but unfortunately, we're out of time today. Thanks for tuning into our show. Please let us know what topics you would like for us to cover. We do look forward to your suggestions. Take care and have a great day. We love to hear from you. Have a great day.